Buongiorno, benvenuto. Southern regions of Italy like Puglia, Campania, and Molise make pasta using only two ingredients, semolina flour and water. However, semolina flour and ricotta cheese are the most common ingredients in two very common pasta shapes. The orecchette, meaning little ears, because they are the shape of small ears, and cavatelli, meaning little hollows, resembling the shape of many hot dog buns. These two pasta shapes are our focus today. I can't wait. Let's jump right into these two super cute fun shapes. They really are fun to make and quite impressive to look at if I do say so myself. As I said, we only need two ingredients. We're using a hard durum semolina flour, which is a coarse flour. It looks like a little like cornmeal, but it's not cornmeal, it's, it's actual wheat. And then we're also using ricotta cheese, which is nice, creamy, wet, a little bit salty. We're making a total of a half a pound of pasta today, which generally feeds two people. But you can make as much or as little as you want. All you need to know is that you need 100 grams, this is 200 here, so you need 100 grams per person of semolina flour, and you need 134 grams of ricotta cheese per person, and this is for two people here. So half of both of these would be technically one serving. Knowing that ratio, you can make one per for one person or you can make for 50 people. So on a work surface, you could also use a large bowl. I'm trying to do it the traditional Italian way here, which is everything is mixed together on a work surface. We're gonna add 200 grams, again, this is for two people. This is 200 grams of, which is about one and two thirds cups of semolina flour. So of course, semolina flour is common to make pastas and couscous in Italy. It is a hard, high protein, rather high gluten, coarse wheat flour. I'm making a well in the center of my flour here just to keep in my cheese. Then uh, make sure you stir your cheese before you measure it out because it will, uh, you might have a little bit of moisture at the top. So we kind of want this to be homogenous. So just make sure you stir it well. And then you're gonna measure out 267 grams, which is one cup plus one tablespoon. And then you're just going to scoop it into the well of your flour. And the way the Italian grandmas do it, you just dig right in with your fingers and then you start blending the flour and the ricotta cheese together. Start out slow. You want to moisten all of that flour. It's just going to become a shaggy dough, so just be careful that you don't get it all over the place. If you want to use a bowl and spoon, by all means, go for it. And just gently start massaging it together. You can see we've got chunks of ricotta cheese there, so it needs to be incorporated. And you'll notice that the flour is a bit coarse, but as we knead it, it will smooth out. Notice that this is just coming together fairly quickly. Should resemble a regular bread dough once it's all mixed together. Okay, so at this point, we're going to knead for 10 minutes. We want the dough to be tacky. It needs to be a smooth ball. It should not be coarse like it is right now because it still has the coarse flour that needs to blend in with the, with the cheese and smooth out. Like with regular dough, flour your work surface as needed. And then you're just gonna knead like you would a regular dough. Add a tablespoon of, if you need to add more water, you can do that if it's too dry. You could also add another tablespoon of cheese if you need to, or flour if it's too wet. But as you knead, you'll recognize that knead, no pun intended there, as you're working the dough. So you're gonna start with the heel of your hand on the dough, and then push forward Pick up the dough, kind of fold it in and rotate it so that you've got like this little mouth towards you. Same thing, press, push forward, and then you just repeat the process for 10 minutes. Finishing up my knead here. I haven't really added any flour to my board in a bit. With the ricotta cheese and this dough, it has a little bit of a fat to it, so I don't really have any sticking going on. It's just 
a smooth, sort of tacky but not sticky dough. Okay, so I'm just gonna flour my board just slightly so the dough doesn't stick. We're just gonna leave it here for 20 minutes. Wanna cover it up, towel, or you can use plastic wrap, and we're just gonna give it just a few minutes to rest. Depending on how much pasta you make, with a half a pan of pasta, I just need one baking sheet and a sheet of parchment paper. And this is where I'm gonna place the pasta as I make it. So then you don't have to use the paper. You could just put it on your cookie sheet, but I like the paper because I can maneuver the pasta around if I need to, if I wanna you know, lift it up and, and like this and put it into my pasta pot to cook, then it works. Um, and then just flour it. You could use semolina flour. You could just regular flour, whatever you want. Just, just to add a little bit of height there so that the pasta has something to sit on and then it doesn't stick to anything. And then just set that aside, but put it where you can easily get to it. So go ahead and make sure your dough is in the shape of a disc. Our first of two shapes today is the orecchetti, which are the small ear shapes, and that is from Puglia. So I'm just gonna divide my dough roughly into quarters and put three on a plate and cover them and set them aside while we work with the other. In a small medium-sized bowl, I'm just gonna, near my work surface, I'm gonna add one to two tablespoons of flour and for me, I like doing that because it keeps my orecchetti from sticking, so I just stick it in there after I make the shapes and then just fish them out when I put them on the cookie sheet. You don't have to do that, but I find it's helpful to keep them from sticking. So with a quarter of your dough, you're going to roll it out. And I didn't put any flour on my work surface because the friction helps to roll the dough out. And we're gonna roll it out to a half inch in diameter thickness. As you can see, I'm not at a half inch yet, and my rope is longer than the surface on which I am rolling. So if that happens, guess what? Just cut it in half, set the other half aside, and keep rolling the half that you have. You can do that as many times as you need to um, based on the surface that, you're, that you have. So this is a half inch thick. Then you're going to go back and you're going to cut every half inch into small little pieces, and you're gonna, you can eyeball this but it should be, you're looking for pretty much squares. So notice how they're squared off there. So you've got that half inch in diameter rope, and then you're cutting about every half inch. So they should be pretty equally squared off. We're gonna do this all the way down. So that's one rope, and I have all these little dough pieces. So you can just move them aside. Take one dough piece, place it in your secondary hand, like so. Use the thumb of your dominant hand, press down in the center, and then gently pull towards you and remove, release your thumb, and that gives you the ear. It's that simple, okay? If you want a more substantial curl, which that's pr a pretty good curl, but if yours for some reason doesn't curl up as much, just place the dough over your thumb and then just shape it around your thumb and of course, that gives you your ear. You can place it on the papered baking sheet, but mine are likely gonna to be touching, so I'm gonna place mine in flour first. And I'm gonna wait till I get a few in here, and then I'll just scoop them out, release some of that flour, and then put them on the baking sheet. If you might need to put some th flour on your thumb in order to help it release from the dough. You could also do the same thing on a, a surface. Let the surface be your secondary hand. I like being able to just do it in my hand. I think that it just sort of makes it easier. Kind of gives me more control over the ears. And then once you have a few in there, like so, then just scoop them out. You could put them on a sifter if you want. Scoop them out with a sifter that is to release some of that flour and then place them on your cookie sheet. You're going to continue forming your orecchettis until you've made as many as you want to make, whether it's because you used up all the dough that you have or you just is enough for you for now. So notice how quickly they just pop right off your thumb and how quickly you can form that ear shape. I'm going to show you again on the surface if you don't want to use your hand. Press down with your thumb, 
pull to toward you, and then it releases and you've got the ear shape. I'm making my last few oriketti, and I want you to see how quickly it is to form those ears and how I can just flick them off into my bowl. I tossed mine in a little bit of flour before I started making the ears. Well, that one was a mess. If you get one that doesn't work right, if it splits on you, just roll it up to a little ball and then reform the ear. It's a little tiny one anyway. Okay, and so that's the rest of them. So those are all the orichetti, and this was a quarter of a pound because we just used half of the pasta. The traditional sauce for these little ears is a ragu sauce that's typically made with meat, vegetables, and sometimes tomatoes or other sauce with vegetables like broccoli, mini meatballs, whatever. Of course, you can use whatever sauce that you want, but the little ears have a nice bowl in them so they can hold some sauce. Mini meatballs would be really good with this. Now for our second of the two shapes today, which is the cavatelli or the small hot dog bun shape. And that is a common shape from Puglia in Molise. So we're gonna start with the half of the half pound that we started out with in our dough. So this is a quarter of a pound. Divide it in half, keep one out, place the other on a plate cover to keep it from drying out. And as we did with, an or or with the orichetti, I just have a small bowl with a little bit of flour to toss the pieces in. And like we did before, we're going to roll the dough into a rope a half inch in diameter, and we'll cut it to fit the size of our board as we need it so that we can continue rolling out. All right, it's getting long, so put it aside, continue rolling. Okay, I think we're close to what we need now. All right, so that's about our half inch thickness. Okay. So what's a little different about this one, instead of cutting them into like squares like we did with the orchetti, we're gonna make them a quarter of an inch longer. So now we want them more of a rectangle. So we're gonna cut these about three quarters of an inch. So that puts us about right there. And you can eyeball these, just make sure they're longer than a square. We want these to be rectangles. And notice how quickly you can cut these if you eyeball them. And it doesn't matter if they're just a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. Okay, well maybe we'll cut that in half. It's a little long. Maybe we'll roll it out individually a little bit longer. There we go, so we get our rectangle. Okay, set those aside. And then you could also just add a little bit of flour from that little bowl that we had. Okay, keep them from sticking. We're rolling around. Okay, and then just keep doing the same routine with the others. So again, notice how quickly you can really uh, break those up. So that's that whole quarter. So take one cavatelli, paste it so that the ends are to your left and right. You're gonna take your index finger and your middle finger. You're gonna press it down in the center. So it's like what we did with orichetti when we used our thumb, now we're using two fingers. You're gonna do the same thing before with orichetti. You're gonna press down and roll towards you, and that creates your mini hot dog shape. So it's a similar to an orichetti in its shape formation, but now they're rectangles instead of ear shapes, okay? And then I'm just gonna set that aside, and we just do that over and over, and like we did with the orichetti, you just start flicking them off once you make that shape, and notice how quickly you can get through a batch. Basically, you're just using your fingers to pick up each cavatelli and placing it in a different location. That's what you have to think of it as, okay? And that's what the cavatelli looks like. Okay, so now if you want the ridges, if you have a gnocchi board, you can use a gnocchi board for this. I do not, but guess what? A fork works just fine. So instead of forming the hot dog bun on the board, you're actually going to do it on the tines. So you can place the fork tines towards you, take your cavatelli dough, put it at the top of the fork tines, place your fingers down like you do on the board and roll it down, and look at that. You get your ridges on the back side, and you get the hot dog shape on the front side. Again, take your cavatelli to the top of the tines, press down with two fingers, roll towards you toward the bottom of the tines till it curls up over your fingers. You've got the ridges on the outside of your fingers, and you've got the mini hot dog bun 
on the inside. And that's how you get ridges. This is optional. You can do the ridges or not. You can create the ridges about as quick as you can creating them just on the flat surface. Because notice how quickly you can create the ridges, ridges. And if you have a Noki board, it does the same thing. A Noki board is just long with all ridges on it. That's what a Noki board is. So it's sort of like the fork tines. So then you just repeat with the remaining dough however much that you want. Again, with ridges or without. It's totally up to you. I'm working on my last few of the cavatellis and I'm just sort of going back and forth between the ridges and just the regular cavatelli. And again, just notice how simple this is. I use my thumb to knock off the cavatelli from my two fingers. See, just like that. And now you can see we have, this again is a half a pound of pasta, half of it is oricetti, the small ears, and the other half is the cavatelli. I have half of the cavatelli has ridges and the other half of the cavatelli doesn't. It's just the mini hot dog buns. And there you go. So ideally, if you were making, you would pick one of these or if you wanted to do um, half ridges and the other half of the cavatelli without ridges, that would be fine too. Both of these work great with, an, with a cream sauce or tomato sauce. What I love about the ridges is that it has space to hold in like a nice little creamy sauce. A traditional cavatelli sauce in Italy would be tomato base with broccoli, garlic broccolini, or tomatoes. It's just whatever sauce that you like or have. And there you are. That's our orecchetti and our cavatelli. If you're not going to cook them right away, place the pan like this in the fridge for up to two days, as long as you're going to cook and eat them within the two day period. For longer storage, freeze the pasta in the pan just like this until it's frozen, then transfer the pasta all together or by shape into a sealed bag or container and freeze for up to three months. Regardless of how you store the pasta, you cook it the same way. Just bring water to a boil, add enough salt so the water tastes like the sea, should be the salinity of the sea, add the pasta as the pasta rises to the top, cook for two minutes, then you're done. That's it, drain it, eat it, and enjoy. Fresh pasta only takes two minutes to cook, while dried pasta takes 10 to 12. Taste and noodle to check for doneness. It should be al dente, which means to the tooth, meaning it has a little bit of a, of a dense bite in the center. Once done, drain serve immediately with your preferred sauce. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing. Alla prossima, andate al cuocere il mondo. Ciao.